Hello everyone, I'm Simone, tech specialist from Kiloview. Thank you to have joined me on my really first webinar as Kiloview host for today. We are going to have a look on the N60 and the E3 new recent updates. Some of you might have known me through the video tutorials on the web or definitely had met me at the trade show with Judy and all the great Kiloview team. I prepared a small slideshow for you in order to show you all the new features. And first of all, I hope everyone can hear me and see my picture as well. So grab yourself a cup of coffee and join me in this webinar and have a look on today's agenda. We are going to have a look on the Kiloview ecosystem, see the N60 and the E3 usage examples through some slides I've prepared for you, and then have a look on the N60 and the E3 firmware update. After the end of the webinar, we will have a 10 to 15 minutes Q&A session where I try to answer all your questions. You might have seen this slide before through our webinar. This is the complete ecosystem from Kiloview. You well know we have a lot of product in the NDI section and both for the public over internet streaming solutions. So everything that concerns your local area network transcoding from baseband to NDI and vice versa, then we can have all the section for the streaming platforms such as the encoder series and the decoder series or the media gateway. Plus, we have a multitude of software that works with our hardware design environment. Altogether, Kiloview will have the possibility to translate your IP workflow into something really crazy. You can have both your baseband equipment mixed with uh, NDI solution, mixed with remote production all together in a single place. The cool thing about of our ecosystem is that we have the softwares that can be deployed both on cloud or on-premise depending on how you want to use those. We have software like Kilolink, Multiview Pro, Kiloview Intercom Server Pro, the NDI Core and the NDI Recorder. Some of them are basically done for Windows platform or macOS but most of those are for Docker containers. So those can be installed into Linux virtual machines, both on cloud or your, on your hardware's design. So it's up to the customer what they want to do. If they want to make something different, they can mix and match them both. Let's have a look on the N60 main features. This encoder is the flagship HDMI 4K 60p encoder from Kiloview. It can be used as encode or decode. That's why we are calling this IO module. It will have both the full NDI and NDIHX capability to encode and decode. And also we have Tally and Intercom in the same box. The great thing about this product is that now it will support all the NDI flavors. So both full NDI, NDI HX and the new NDI HX3. This latest version puts the encoder to works even better in image quality with lower latency than the previous NDI HX2 codec. Looking forward to the E3, this is our flagship encoder. It is a dual encode setup. We have HDMI up to 4K 30p and SDI up to 1080p 60. And we have both encoding in H.264 and H.265. So basically with the H.265 you will be able to have the same bandwidth you use it for the H.264 but with double the image quality. 
we have those dual encoders to multi-platform design destination. So it's not about only having two inputs, but you can have actually multiple outputs at the same time and you can also mix and match those. The E3 will support multiple streaming formats, such as NDIHX, RTMP, RTSP, SRT, MPEG-TS, and HLS. You are basically covered with every streaming format you want to use to stream your program to everywhere in the world. Let's have a look on some N60 and E3 working scenarios now. I've prepared some slides to actually have a look on how we can use those products in the real world workflows. The N60, of course, can be used as a direct encoder mode. You see, you can put on the camera and have your NDI or NDIHX directly to your software video mixer of choice, such as vMix, Vector Plus, OBS, Wirecast, and many more. You can also use this as a decoder. So whether you want to decode an NDI or NDI HX with the N60, you can use the HDMI output to stream those NDI feed back to video walls, monitors, LED walls, and projectors. You can also use two units at the same time. Whether you want to use an encoder or decoder you can basically use two hardware side by side. For this example, I can encode the feed from the camera, get into the switch, and use another N60 as a decoder from my NDI feed back to my monitors, LED walls, and projectors. One of the coolest things N60 can do for you is actually being able to transition in, in between baseband and NDI workflow. In this specific example, the encoding camera go to the switch, be decoded by the other N60 and goes back into the mixer. So having a basement mixer doesn't necessarily mean you can't work in NDI. Let me do this small example for you. This is a traditional way of using a basement mixer. You see, you have your cameras, you go with the cable directly to the mixer, but it, there's a few cons, you know, you can have long distance coverage, for example, with HDMI, you have a higher time setup, you basically don't have any flexibility in the operation you do. And of course, there's no expandability without taking consideration extra hardware to add to this setup. Furthermore, there will be a higher cost if you want to add some software design in order to make it work with your baseband equipment. You know, if you want vMix, other software, you might need capture cards, multiple workstation works together. But let's introduce the NDI workflow now. We can move to something like that, where we have the encoders and basically all the signals being carried through switches with one cable or one fiber to connect those two switches, we can send NDI feed back to baseband. This, of course, will have some longer distance coverage, there will be a lower time setup involved, and of course, max flexibility by working over IP. For real, this will be the most future-proofing thing you can do. And moreover, you have software plus hardware total interoperability. You are not blocking by the fact that you use your baseband mixer. You might considering, well, but I might need more decoders and that wouldn't be so easy to cable all the stuff. That's why I've introduced in this slide the Creedle series, where you can have rack mountable encoders or decoders to have a better cabling solution overall. Let's talk about the E3. The E3 is more as an encoder for the public internet. So you can have video software like the one we have talked before and translate those signals 
into platforms such as YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, Instagram, TikTok or WhatsApp servers. Of course, all our baseband solution can be used at the same time, whether it has HDMI or SDI outputs. You know, you can consider this as a main slide solution for fixed installation, where we have one studio that needs to be connected to another studio. So I put one encoder to one side and the decoder to the other side to make them talk together. We can also introduce the same thing whether we talk about remote production. Maybe we have OB-WAN that needs to send signals to the studio and vice versa. We can mix and match encoders and decoders in order to cross the public internet. Let's have a look now on the N60 and E3 new firmware updates. The new firmware for the N60 is the version 2.02.0006. We have introduced NDIHX recording over USB and NAS. Now the front screen acts as a tally light as well as the rear tally one. We have introduced scaling in the coding mode. So basically you can upscale or downscale your signal to a different format and different frame rate. This doesn't apply to interlaced signals. We also have introduced the interlacing in NDIHX. So rather you have an interlaced signal and you want to transcode this into progressive scan, you can do it by using NDIHX in H.265. The E3 firmware version is the 1.00.0023. We also have introduced the encode recording through USB and NAS. We added a edit module where you can change HDMI edit. We have included PTZ control over serial or network. And now you can change the channel selection on your HDMI or SDI input. You will be able to basically select two channels on the four supported from the HDMI or two channels from the eight supported by the SDI. Let's now take a look on the N60 web GUI. All right, we open a browser, insert the IP address of our N60, put the username and password and login. This is the web GUI of the N60. On the left side, we have the preview, and on the right side, we have all the data of our ingested signal. At the moment, we are using Full HD 50p. For the HX version, we are using H.264 and HX2. We have two channels at 48 kHz, and this is the bitrate of the video. Here on the bottom, we have our NDIHX settings. So we can change the name of our stream. We can change the encoding quality. Over the NDI HX setting, we have lots of more setting here. We can change the codec, so H.264 or H.265. We can change the HX version, so HX2 or HX3, and also the color space. Here we have multiple options. The 10-bit variance at the moment works only with our encoder decoders. So basically, if you have two N60, you can use the 10-bit. You can see here in the red uh, marker. Uh, but definitely through firmware update, we will see this feature also with the NDI 6 upcoming. On the audio tab, we can decide whether to use HDMI as the audio source or the lining. Then the number of channels, we have six channels for HDMI at the moment. We can also, of course, uh, change the gain of the channel and change the connection uh, of the NDI. Rather, the default is uh, TCP. Then we have RUDP, multi-TCP disallowed and multicast. 
We do have kind of the same settings for the NDI full bandwidth. Something is missing because we don't have any codec to choose from here because it's an iframe solution. So we can change the quality to superior to have the highest uh, bitrate possible and the lower latency. We can still change the audio channels and uh, we can still change the connection. On the bottom of the preview, you will see we have uh, three small buttons where we can have the safe area for stuff like uh, tiles or wherever you want to put overlay to the signal to be sure you are not too big in the canvas. We have the cross center and the PTZ control that we can set up in the settings. On the top here, we can decide whether to output NDI and NDI checks simultaneously or disable one of the two. And here, where's the image and video button, we can decide whether to have a few frames for the preview or a smoother preview with a video instead. Let's now take a look on the recording feature. If we select the NDIHX tab, you see this recording setting. From here, basically, we can record through USB drive or NAS, and I show you how to configure this. And we have a few options. We can record and split the file to a limited size and time. Limited time, so we can decide a timing to split the file or also by AutoCAD multiple file by the limited size in megabyte. We have the recording strategy. We can decide to use loop or stop when full. Basically, if we select loop, uh, the recording will continue through and start to overlapping on the beginning of the file. With a file format, we have two options. We can use MOV or MPEG4. Let me show you in the setting how to achieve this. If we go into the record setting, you see we have no USB drive currently attached to our device. And we have also network storage. If we add network storage here, basically we settle all the parameters of our uh, NAS and we can record directly through the network. But for this specific webinar, I'm going to use um, a USB time drive that I'm connecting right now to the encoder. If we refresh the record here, you see we have the USB attached to the N60. Here is completely empty. Uh, let's try to record some clips. Let's go back to the home and press again the recording setting. Now I'll select unlimited size, MPEG4 and loop as a recording strategy. I press OK. Uh, if we press record and I did it on purpose, nothing happened because we have to select the USB stick here on the top. OK. Once we have selected, we basically gonna tell the N60 where to record. Now, if we press record, you can see now the record button turns to red and on the top we have the record uh, right here. If we wait a few seconds, we can record this clip in MPEG-4 and I also want to show you we can record into MOV. So let let me stop the recording for now and select MOV this time instead and press OK. Now we can start and record also a clip in MOV. All right, let's wait a few seconds and stop the recording. OK, if we press right here, we can do nothing basically, but 
we have to wait to download the file. If we go on setting and onto recording setting, if we press on the USB drive, you see now there's two clips and I can basically download this throughout this little button right here. And I'm going to show you in my download tab, I've downloaded these actual clips. Here you see in my download tab, I've downloaded both the MPEG-4 and the MOV file. And I can simply double click and play out through VLC. All right. We have basically recorded two clips with the hour N60. This is really convenient, especially if you want to have a backup of your camera record, for example, or your master program, you simply click the record and you forget about it. From this interface, we can also decide to delete the files with the trash icon here. So we clean it up the USB. Let me now uh, show you the, the interlace feature. Uh, let's go in the NDIHX setting, uh, select HX3 first, and H265. Uh, this feature is only available through H265 at the moment due to hardware construction. Uh, let me first change uh, the input of the N60 to interlace into my video mixer software. Okay, I've changed it right now. Let me refresh the page. And you see here now I have uh, 1080i50. So we can basically go into the NDIHX setting and activate the, the interlacing module. So right now, basically what happening is that wherever we use the NDI input, we are going to see that we will have a progressive scan instead of the interlacing one. I'll just disable this so I can show you on the studio monitor that we will have interlaced if we use this way and we will have progressive if we press on. Okay, here's the studio monitor. I've selected the HX uh, signal from here and you can see on the top we have 50i. Uh, let me use the, the interlacing right now and as far as a modification completed, we are going to look in at, at the um, studio monitor and we'll see progressive. And here we go. We have now progressive scan from the N60. Okay, let me jump into the decoder mode to see all the scaling new feature. Let's give the N60 some time to reboot and enter in decoding mode. Okay, let's now add some sources here in order to uh, scale them to the output resolution. Uh, I have my 4V mix output. Let's create some presets. Uh, I will add accordingly to the output tab. All right, let's, for example, take the first one and you see we have uh, 1080p50, but with the gear here on top, we now can decide a lot of things. First of all, the video output format, as you can see, is a 1080p but I can decide for example to downscale to 720 and maybe let's say we want to have a 25 here actually we can also change the color space the the, the HDCP 
uh, and uh, a lot of other stuff uh, for example the mapping channel of the audio but let's stick with the scaling mode if we press ok here you see in the output format now we are 720 at 25p and the cool thing is that we can also upscale the signal even to 4k if we need it this is really convenient especially if you have some monitor or some LED wall processor that doesn't accept some certain you know refresh rate or video canvas and you can modify accordingly if I press OK for example now on the 4k 60 I have my 1080p 50 signal upscale to 4k 60 and that's really amazing feature added to the N60 let's now take a look on the E3 web UI all right we have put in the IP address of our E3 so we can log in and there's and this is the web UI of the E3 as you can see on the left side we have HDMI, SDI and mix input uh, at, for now I'm using two different signals and the mix tab is uh, disabled at the moment but let me show you all the features of the E3 on the left side we have our preview as the N60 we can decide rather to have some image frames or a video preview and on the right side we have the video source and the frame rate and the canvas shown on top of here we can decide the video encoding whether h264 or h265 uh, change the scaling change the refresh rate the bitrate control the gob size and the bitrate of course and all all this parameter you can see in here for the audio source uh, as i told you before right now in the audio source settings for the hdmi we can decide the stereo pairs between one and two and three and four as an input and if we go into the sdi tab we can decide up to seven and eight so in this tab we can decide whether our input signal as different audio channels we can decide what we want to encode from those audio channels later on to a new firmware update we will be able also to translate this to the encoding streaming service but right now let's continue and i want to show you on the streaming service here on the add tab we can basically add all the protocols we talked before so rtsp rtmp srt hls and ts udp a uh, super simple example i can give you is uh, just uh, select srt for example uh, select one port into listener mode we are gonna look in uh, into a lan first so let's give it the name uh, press ok and if we enable the srt stream we can basically copy and paste with this button and take something like vlc for example and play out the stream so if i paste the link into vlc you can notice i have the video feed uh, let me show you also within the SDI so I can go here on the SDI click on add uh, select another port and give it a name enable the SRT stream let's copy this and open this back to VLC so we have a video you can clearly see moving and there's actually not so much latency uh, in this kind of scenario we are in the local area network at the moment but 
let me show you one of the new feature we have introduced which is the recording as the N60 so you see no storage disk yet we are gonna put the HDMI so I show you uh, I'm gonna insert the USB stick in front of the E3 and if we go into the recording tab again here we have our USB thumbstick from here we can do all the same thing we have seen on the N60 so we will be able to download the file and so on if we press on the menu let's go into the SDI tab we simply press record on here and it will start recording and you will see the rec button here on the top for the E3 uh, we can't decide anything on the encoder uh, settings because it will use the encode onto this video encoding side here so at the moment for example are we using 2.5 megabits at uh, 50p and so on if I stop the recording right now and go back to the recording tab select the USB drive you see I have the recording from the SDI we can still download this and play out to VLC here's the download tab I can double click and play out through VLC the recording of the E3 will be a uh, MOV file we can see in the properties of the file right here dot MOV we can of course still delete the clip from here so we just press delete and we clean up the USB stick On the new addition we have also the edit uh, changing so if we go into the edit setting here we now can basically export our edit for from the encoder so if we press ok we have saved this into the download uh, of our computer and we can actually re-import this back to the encoder or change it with some other edit we want to change for the encoder itself one other cool feature have been the PDZ settings so at the moment I actually attach a telecom uh, camera and if we go into the Ethernet tab of our PTZ camera we just need the IP address and the VSCA over IP um, port if we come back to the E3 and enable the PTZ control you've seen I've just used these settings before we can simply press apply in this case I'm controlling a NDI PTZ camera so I select network PTZ but actually I can also use through serial ports and select serial and whether I have a USB to serial adapter attached to the unit I will be able to control the PTZ camera anyway let's use these PTZ settings I've saved before and let's go back to the ohm in the HDMI input I've actually put the feed from the telecom so if I press PDZ you will see I have all the PTZ controllers and if I zoom out you see I'm zooming out and controlling the PTZ parameters directly from the E3 so I can pan I can tilt I can zoom in zoom out I can also change the speed and I can also recall some presets so if for example I do this one I press save I save the preset on this number one 
let's zoom out a little bit and completely change the image so i press 2 and press save and now if i press 1 again and go to it will recall the previous presets as well on the 2 The E3 is a dual encode unit, so we can use the mix tab. If we enable this, basically it will say the operation will turn the HDMI and SDI encode mode to the mix mode. With the mix mode, we can have a picture in picture or picture by picture of those two signals simultaneously. If we go here, for example, we can also video switching the source, so HDMI to SDI, or we can, of course, change the layout. If I want, for example, to put this down right here, I can do it like so. I can also do super weird setup. I can basically crop the image the way I want, and here we go. This is a really convenient feature if we want to embed two signal in one on the E3. I've almost forgot to show you the actually tally lamp in front of the N60. And as far as we have this PTZ camera, I can show you through my vMix instance that if I put the video feed from the N60, the screen will turn green. And if I put it into the program, it will turn red and as far basically there's none of the two I will come back to the menu okay I ended for now let's go through the Q&A session I will try to answer all your questions let me be back on the screen okay guys uh, <laughs> I've seen a uh, lot of question for now uh, let's answer some of those uh, so do the n60 record now yes as a show it will record both on the usb time drive and either on nas uh, uh, can i use the n60 to send ndi across the internet to make point-to-point -point transfer Okay, uh, this is uh, a wild uh, argument. Uh, it's not just about our product, I would say. Uh, if you have the NDI tools, uh, you can definitely use uh, MDI Bridge. Uh, within NDI Bridge, you can actually connect uh, multiple venues at once uh, and share NDI feed in between those venues. So it's uh, rather a software application and the cool thing is free because it came with the NDI tools. So yes, you can definitely send NDI across the internet. Uh, okay. How the latency for the N60 in the LAN network? Is that latency come from the camera? Uh, all right. The standard latency over uh, full NDI for our N60 and N50 and basically all the N series design is uh, roughly about uh, 40 millisecond. So if we work at uh, 1080p 50 or even 4k whatever uh, you might expect uh, some sort of two frame latency glass to glass. Uh, of course, this is, doesn't take count of uh, your camera. Uh, you might have some camera that has a higher latency overall. Uh, so it depends, uh, of course, uh, regarding the camera itself. Um, rather than this, I would say like 40 milliseconds is uh, pretty much the number you have to consider to this. So briefly, uh, both two frame at 50 or 60p. Uh, 
uh, the he 3 now support eight channels uh, as I said before uh, at this uh, firmware update uh, basically uh, what happened uh, you can decide the channels uh, you couldn't use it in encode mode but we are planning of course to uh, change this throughout a new firmware update where you can do this also on the encode tab let me show you for a second uh, my screen just a second uh, as you can see here if we go onto the SDI as I show uh, sorry into the audio tab as I showed before in the input channel now you can basically select your channels but we are also uh, planning to add this also onto the streaming service so basically you will have the possibility to embed multiple uh, audio channels over your RTMP, SRT or whatever other protocol you're gonna use uh, what is the record format for N60 also for E3? Uh, at the moment, the N60 can be recorded both on MPEG-4 or MOV, uh, while the E3 uh, is recording MOV uh, using the bitrate uh, accordingly to the video encoding setup for each input. Okay, so you can decide also to change the bitrate, for example, on HDMI rather differently to SDI and you can have two different bitrate, but the codec, it will be MOV. Uh, did the E3 support 4K 30p? Yes, uh, the E3 will support uh, uh, 4K 30 uh, onto input and uh, is a 3G SDI on the, on the SDI, of course. So 1080p60 max resolution. Uh, does the N60 support NDI5? Yes, the all, briefly all the new NDI products will support NDI5 uh, natively. Uh, let me show again this screen. If we go right here, you see in the connection, uh, the default connection will be TCP at the moment, but you can also choose RUDP to be in the standard of uh, NDI5. Uh, this doesn't make so much change in terms of uh, latency, but in some cases uh, with some legacy device, uh, RUDP is not always uh, possible to be used, so uh, take in mind about this. Uh, is the N60 support multiple audio channel? Yes, uh, as I said also before, if you go into the audio tab, uh, you will see we have up to six channels support into the encoding tab and actually eight channels onto the decoding one where you can change also the two channel and uh, use the matrix array to change the order of those channel uh, to be outputted by the baseband uh, HDMI. Uh, in the past, I used the N60 decoding mode. There will be a lag and delay when switching sources. is much better now. Uh, uh, we have uh, seen this problem recently with uh, different kind of resolution or frame rate. We are trying to uh, solve this problem to have a smoother or even uh, lagless uh, switching. Uh, and this will be, of course, uh, prompt to the r and I will try to solve this as fast as possible. Uh, then... Did I catch it right? The N60 frame rate convert P50 to P60? Yes. Uh, in decoding mode, you will be able to basically change both the canvas size 
and the uh, frame rate at the same time. So this is really convenient if you don't have the possibility to have a scaler, for example, or you basically don't have to add any additional hardware to uh, convert your signal to something else like projectors, LED walls, processors, uh, monitor that might not allow you to have a specific frame rate. So the, the code module of the N60 will do it for you. Uh, then what do we have? E3 can support network trunk PTZ. Uh, I guess so, like you can use uh, the routing strategy if you want to cross different subnetting, you can do that, of course. Uh, and uh, a real world scenario that I didn't show uh, during the webinar is that, uh, as I said, uh, you can always take in care uh, or in consideration that N NDI Bridge will be a great companion to make your test in order to share NDI feed and maybe capturing this in NDI and uh, HDMI maybe or SDI and try to control the PTZ remotely. Uh, we are planning to, uh, of course, add all the products to the Kilolink server. So you will be able to actually control those parameters also remotely without accessing the unit in the local area network. The, the N60 support 10 bit 422. Yes, it will support uh, uh, 422 on 10 bit via H.264 or H.265 using the uh, HX uh, transcoding module. At the moment, uh, is a feature that will require, unfortunately, our encode or decode at the same time. So you have end-to-end -end solution, but be aware that uh, NDI 6 will be out soon and it will support uh, both 10-bit color gamut and HDR. So you will be able basically uh, in the future months to, to send this kind of signals also to software application, whatever I've been used, the NDI SDK or the NDI advanced SDK, of course. Uh, the, 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 let's see. Can we remap the audio channels? Yes, on the N60 you have the possibility, you have a matrix array where you can change the uh, inputs uh, of the channels and maybe remap, for example, one and two to three and four and stuff like that. So E3 and, and 60 record with the USB flash drive can support recording of, F, uh, of MPEG-4 format file. Yes, it will record both MPEG-4 and MOV. As I say, you will, you will choose first. So rather to use MPEG-4 or MOV, but then you stick with the codec to record. Uh, Quality-wise, I would say there's no much of a difference. It's more in terms of uh, uh, bandwidth consumption on your uh, USB thumbstick, but the 420 uh, encoding at 8 bit is really valuable also on uh, on MPEG 4. Uh, let's see if we have something more. Uh, for 3G support both level A and, and level B. Okay, this is something that uh, I've seen so many requests about. Uh, at the moment, Kiloview products will work with level A. Uh, we know this level B is uh, uh, a little bit confusional because uh, some brands uh, my use uh, multiplexing the 1.5G, uh, like two channels into one 3G SDI. Uh, we're trying to see what we can do about it, but briefly on the broadcast level solution, you will 
always see level A as the eye, so no multiplexing in between those two uh, feed that have been sent into one cable only. Let's say that level B is a more of can, can a hold standard transition in between uh, this new world of SDI from 3G to 6G to 12G, but would definitely pass through this information to the R&D. Uh, let's see if we have something else. Uh, what do you expect a delivery of the Dante facility? Uh, this is uh, something we are working on. I think Judy has uh, answered to this. So we, we will see what we can do about it. We are also interested to something like that. Uh, someone has... Oh, wait, okay. Uh, is there any release date for KiloLink Server Pro? We are uh, hoping really to have something new for you guys uh, at the end of this year uh, to have all the new products category be added to the new KiloLink Server. It, 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 it will be a much more uh, powerful solution than what we have done till now. So uh, I know a lot of you are waiting. We we're really hoping that we can give you some news really soon. Uh, I've seen another question. What about the edit on the E3? Uh, yes, edit basically allows you to change the resolution uh, to use custom resolution. If Let me change the screen again. Uh, if we go into the E3, onto the setting, you will see on the edit setup, you can export uh, the file of your current edit and you can also import the file. I've opened here, uh, a small window is a site you can Google it, it's edit.tv, where there's a lot of edit files. Uh, they are mostly, uh, you know, a TXT file you can download. Uh, after you download those files, you can actually import uh, into the E3. So if you import this, uh, at the moment uh, you will see only bin file, but if you go to all the file, you will see I can rather use uh, different files, even if it's uh, edit format and press open and will import a specific uh, edit file for you. And whether you don't need it, this custom resolution, you can always uh, press reset and you will see the number will change accordingly. So yes, you can basically do this kind of things right now which is really convenient especially you know if you have uh, some sort of projectors or lead wall custom resolution that might not allow you to use only broadcast resolutions such as hd 1080p or 4k so yes uh, we'll see if we have something uh, new uh, Okay, I don't kind of see anything new for now. So if uh, I think it's kind of all for today, if the Dayu or ID want to uh, join me and say goodbye to anyone, uh, I think uh, we are good to go. And I really much appreciate all your time uh, spent with me and uh, be expected some new webinar in the future so we can talk together and see what the new product will be and all the future updates. So thank you for your attention.